We're back for some more FIBA World Cup action. We got a four game main site here on Friday. Super excited for this one. Welcome guys, my name is DK. I cover content for uh, DraftKings and player prop sites like Prize Picks and Underdog. Again, we'll be breaking down the uh, World Cup main slate uh, in this video on DraftKings. $2,000 to first, not bad there. Um, and before we get in the video, I wanna talk about uh, Odds Jam, they're the sponsor, and you can check out, uh, I have the sports book screen up right now. Taking a look at all these games, basically showing you which sports books currently offer the best odds. If you were, if you want to bet on the games, right now it looks like only FanDuel and DraftKings do have odds up. But um, the later games here, we got Dominican Republic and uh, Puerto Rico. Dominican Republic about nine and a half point favorites. Slovenia and Australia, Australia about five and a half point favorites here. Lithuania and Greece, uh, Lithuania six and a half point favorites. And Canada to Brazil, currently the game with the biggest uh, spread, nineteen and a half point favorites are Canada. Um, if you guys are interested in signing up for OddsJam, you can use the code uh, DKDFS for 25% off your first month. They have a ton of different tools, uh, stuff for, uh, D or for DFS sites like uh, Price Picks and Underdog as well. Um, to give it a try, link down below. Uh, you will not be disappointed. All right. Um, so uh, let's get in the video. Quickly talking about... Um, Last slate, so it was a decent slate for me. I, I just missed in the big tournament in GPPs, but I had like 184. It was a good score. If I would have entered high stakes, I would have, I think, got second place there. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of the field kind of just chase what happened last game, and we saw that with Hawkinson. Um, he was like 70% owned, um, and uh, you saw it with RJ as well. He was pretty, pretty high owned. It's not like I dislike those guys, but kind of had a feeling they were going to be a bit over-owned because of recency bias, and they were. Where I played uh, Ehab Amin, he was about you know, 30 40%. I played uh, Jordan Clarkson. He was on like 15% owned. Um, Clarkson blew both those other spend ups out of the water, even though uh, he didn't have the best shooting game. Um, all right, so uh, and we went 4-2 and two on props as well, so continue to dominate over there. Again, if you guys are interested in uh, more content for DFS uh, or for player prop stuff, I already posted a lot of props up for tomorrow, so you can check my Patreon link down below. We've been killing it over there and hoping to keep that going for tomorrow. All right, so we'll start off with Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. So uh, on the Puerto Rico side, you got Tremont Waters here at the top of 9-4. Um, I think is a, is a pretty solid spend-up. You're getting them a discount off of some of these other spend-ups. Now, you'll notice some of the other spend-ups. It's, it's hard, right? Uh, it, it's going to be a little bit trickier. I mean, you got Luca at 14K. So Waters, you know, is the clear go-to guy. And uh, in a competitive game, I expect him to play close to the entire game. I mean, he played 44 minutes in overtime against that in South Sudan, so 39 minutes. Um, I'm expecting huge mitts here for Tremont Waters. And uh, yeah, I like him as a discount off some of the other spin ups. Now, as far as the rest of Puerto Rico goes, you got Khan did at 8 4. He dealt with a little bit of foul trouble last game. I'm expecting him to play you know, 30 ish minutes. There's some foul risk going up against Carl Anthony Towns. Not interested in Thompson. Romero's fine. Pinero is fine. Um, for value, uh, one guy I'll mention, Jordan Howard. He's somewhat at the bench and kind of playing the backup point guard role. And, uh, you know, when Tremont Waters does sit for a bit, uh, Howard's kind of the guy, and they are running a lot of two guard lineups as well with him and and, and Water. So I'm gonna do some interest in Howard if you need some value. Uh, again, a relative value usage player too. If you take a look at his shots, six, fourteen, eight. I was watching the game as well, and uh, yeah, he's he's relatively he's pretty talented. So do some interest there in Howard for value. Let's move on to the Dominican Republic. So you got Cat at ten six, and you have to make some tough calls with these spin ups. You probably only gonna be able to get one um, with just the way that the slate works. Nelson some foul trouble last game. So not really worried about the 15 minutes. Also, again, they already advanced, so they didn't need to really play him a ton. But I have no issue if you want to spend up for Cat. Again, he should play 30-plus minutes. And, uh, yeah, I think he's totally reasonable. As far as the rest of the Dominican Republic goes, no no priorities here. Uh, you got Andres Feliz. Uh, he's playing the point guard position. Um, he should play around 30 minutes. He's fine at 8-1. Uh, you got Victor Lees uh, at 6.8K. Again, he's had a couple 30 fantasy point games. You got Montero at uh, six seven. He's kind of been up and down, does a little bit of foul trouble. Um, two guys that I thought would play a lot more would be Lester and LJ, but they are not getting a lot of run for this team. And then for value, I think um, Delgado is interesting. Uh, with Cat getting foul trouble, he got extended last game. He's coming off the bench right now, but I still probably expect you know mid to high teens minutes for him. And a four point three K, he's about a fantasy point per minute guy. I think he is a decent value play. All right, Australia and Slovenia. This this game I expect to be played at super fast pace. And there's just a lot of interest in me in this game. So I'll start with the two top guys here, Mills and Giddy. I have interest in both. Uh, again, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get Luca in there. Not saying you can't, not saying you have to fade Luca, but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult when you have other spend ups kind of the nine to ten k range that um, 
you know, are, are going to play close to the entire game. So Patty Mills, I and mean, we saw with the Olympics a few years ago, he's still a guy that can put the ball in the bucket. I expect uh, minutes to tick up a bit on him as well. I think Mill, guys like Mills and, and Giddy could play mid-30s minutes. Again, they've been involved in a lot of blowouts here. The, the minutes are not right here. He played more than 13 minutes, so don't be worried about that. Um, I'm excited for mid-30s minutes for Mills and Giddy. I think Giddy has a little bit of a higher floor. Both have a pretty high ceiling, though, uh, especially, again, if Mills is making a shot. So the two Australian guards I like in a game that should be played at a fast pace. Um, Ingles I'll pass on. Xavier Cooks I think is probably fish food. Um, again, this is another will probably be another situation of uh, you'll you'll see who the good DFS players are by the Xavier Cooks ownership. Now, um, again, it, just a complete outlier game. He he, he sixteen rebounds for Xavier Cooks is just not going to happen again. Two blocks as well. No, um, I do think he's probably going to play around twenty minutes. But at six K, uh, again, I'll let the fish chase uh, the Cooks game. Josh Green started. He played uh, again. The minutes are not right. He played more than thirteen. He played like twenty one minutes. I want to say. Uh, he starts again. I think he's a reasonable value play. Exum will come off the bench, probably play around 20 minutes, fine for tournaments. Uh, in the front court, there's some there's some value here. Drew Upreath and Nick K. Um, Drew Upreath, uh, I think, probably plays low 20s minutes. Played relatively well. And then Nick K has been a little bit quiet, but in about you know low to mid 20s minutes, I think he's a pretty safe play as well. So I like the front court here for Australia and then the two guards. Let's talk about Slovenia. Again, Luca. I mean, if you have the salary... Uh, no issue with him. He's probably going to play low to mid-30s minutes and probably going to give you like 50 to 60 fancy points. So just a matter of are you comfortable with enough value around uh, on this slate to get him in there? So, um, you know, I've said basically every slate so far with Luca that he was a priority for me. He's not a priority. That doesn't mean I'm not going to play him. Um, I just don't think he's an absolute must at this price point at 14K. But, um, yeah, ceiling's massive with Luca. Floor is very high. Toby at 7K, reasonable play. He dealt with a bit of foul trouble last game, so Ziga Dimich got extended, but I'm expecting 30-ish minutes for Mike Toby in a game that should be played at a fast pace. Uh, I think that's fine. You got um, Krem- uh, Kremlin Preplich. Uh, he's probably their, their number two on offense coming off the bench um, and being a relatively high usage player. I think he's a fine GPP play. If you're fading Luka, maybe you can look to a Preplich. Not going to get to Zoran Dragic. Bine Preplich is starting and playing mid to high 20s minutes. He's a fair value play, not a guy at the high ceiling. You have a little bit interesting to Kolich as well, and he's playing low low twenties minutes. Uh, Ziga Dimich got extended a bit last game because of Toby foul trouble. Probably not uh, as interesting in this slate. He was a guy that I liked last slate because of the blowout risk, but um, this game should stay competitive. So unless you think Toby gets in foul trouble, I'm probably going to stay away from Ziga Dimich. Greece and Lithuania. So for Greece, what I wanted to mention here is, uh, you know, that was a really important game for them. Obviously, a must win, and they tightened up their rotation. Right. Uh, let's see. Did it? Not. Okay, I did. So you saw a pretty, pretty big change here. Thomas walk up thirty-seven minutes. Georgia, Georgios Papagianis thirty-three minutes. Hostis uh, Papanakalo. <laughs> Don't know how to pronounce his name. He played thirty minutes. Um, Papa Petru played twenty-nine minutes. So um, they ran a bit of a tighter rotation here. Uh, which I think makes things interesting. So the top guys, I don't think are going to be super popular just with the way that the slate works with a lot of spend ups. But Papa Giannis and Walk Up, I think are interesting plays here. Papa Giannis, you know, one of their main guys offensively, he's like 7 3. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there is some foul risk going up against uh, big Jonas Valanciunas. But um, I have some interesting Papa Giannis and, and Thomas Walk Up as well. I mean, he played 38 minutes, right? Previous games, 28, 25. I'm not sure those are blowouts. But if you get me close to the entire game from Walk Up, who can stuff a stat sheet. Um, I definitely uh, like him. Um, so, yeah, walk up things interesting tournament play as well. Uh, basically, a lot of tournament plays here for, for Greece. Uh, again, Papa Petru had a really big game last game. Um, you saw, who else was it? Uh, this guy had a big game in, uh, again, the minutes are wrong, but he, he went for 24 minutes or 24 fancy points. Um, again, they're, they're kind of going to ride the hot hand of a lot of these guys. The Gnosis really didn't do a ton, but he still saw 20 minutes. So, Basically, I'm going to say everyone here on Greece is uh, GPP play, like uh, Lauren Zekis uh, had a big game in 35 minutes. So um, a lot of tournament plays here. No one's a must, but if this game stays competitive, I mean, at least one of these main guys can have a really good game for the price point. The, the tough part is trying to figure out who it's going to be. On the Lithuania side, I mean, the minutes on JV have been disappointing. Now, the fir- first game dealt some foul trouble, but the previous two games, no foul trouble. Now, there were blowouts, but still... Like, I don't know. It, it is a little bit disappointing right now, the minutes. I'll, I'm going to say JV more of a tournament play for me right now. But, I mean, if he plays, if you get the game where JV plays like 27, 28 minutes, I mean, he has 50 fans point upside. Like, he should be able to feast against like Papa Giannis, right? So, 
I definitely saw some interest in JV. Ignis Bras Degas, I'm going to pass on. Uh, Rokas uh, Jokobates, uh, I think, is a really solid option as well. He should play 25 to 30 minutes. Played 30 minutes last game. Um, 19, 5, and 6 with a steal and a block. So I do like him a good amount. And then there's some tournament options here. Uh, Seta Kareskis uh, had a good game in 28 minutes. I think he's reasonable. Uh, Monte Yunus, the former Rockets legend. Again, he's playing kind of the backup five. I think he's a pretty safe value play. Should play mid, mid to high teens minutes. Um, and then I'll mention uh, Tomas Diem, uh, Diemza, uh, who's been playing around 20 minutes a game. Not a super high usage player, but min price. And if you need value, that's that's okay. Finally, Brazil and Canada. So on the Brazil side, uh, I think there's some interesting tournament plays here. Uh, they're pretty big dogs, but if this game stays competitive, I think Bruno Caboclo is going to need to have a pretty big game. Um, so I could see him playing 30 plus minutes here. He's a guy that's had some pretty big games in the qualifiers. If you look up his stats, um, so Caboclo intrigues me in large field tournaments. Right? I think people are going to cross him off because of the spread, but um, I definitely still have some interest in him. The point guard, uh, Iago uh, Matias, had a really big game last game in uh, 29 minutes, 53 fancy points, 7.2K, another interesting tournament play. Should be one two punch there with him and Caboclo. Um, Yendel uh, is fine. Again, he's dealt some foul trouble. He's 5.9K. Suarez has also dealt some foul trouble, but I think mean, he's a fine GPP play. So, uh, yeah, then I'll mention Huartes as well. Like, he's not playing time minutes off the bench, but um, he is the flat min price. Probably plays like 15 or so minutes. So, again, if you're going to a guy like Luca, you're going to have to consider some of those like really, really cheap plays. Finally, Canada. So, I mean, I'm pretty high in SGA. I mean, as long as the game stays competitive, I mean, uh, the game turned into blowout there at the end, but in 31 minutes, went for 48 fancy points. So, um, I, I like the ceiling quite a bit in SGA. He's the clear go-to guy. And, uh, yeah, you're getting him about a you know, two, 2.5K discount off of Luka Doncic. Now, I still think Luka is safer, but um, I think SGA has a pretty uh, similar ceiling. Not as interested in RJ Barrett. You know, he'll play around 30 minutes. I just don't really see a massive ceiling on him. I am interested, though, in Kelly Olynyk, who probably plays around 30 minutes of the game, so he's competitive. He's a stat sheet stuffer at 6.6K. I like that. Lou Dort didn't play last game. I was trying to find information on it. He hasn't played the last couple games, so couldn't find if he's, like, injured or whatnot. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. But um, with him not playing last few games, you've seen NAW, um, my boy, uh, get extended a bit. Again, last game was a or two games ago was a massive blowout. But last game, so, say, somewhat competitive until the end. He played 32 minutes. So if there's no Lou Dort again, uh, I'm fine firing up some of my boy NAW. Dylan Brooks, I mean, he's going to play, I don't know, low low 20s minutes. I honestly think I would rather play NAW than Dylan Brooks. And for value, I actually do kind of like Dwight Powell. Um, again, not a guy with a with a massive ceiling, but I think probably plays low 20s minutes. Um, I think he's kind of right there, you know, with like Nick K of like a pretty safe value play. Um, so, yeah, I definitely still have a little bit of interest there in Dwight Powell. Okay, so that's it for the player by player breakdown. Hope you guys do enjoy. Again, if you're looking for more content, you can always check out my Patreon link down below. I already have a player pull up. I'm going to have a roster construction video kind of talking about where I think the optimal build is. And then I'll be posting starters. Uh, we got news uh, before lock today, right? It was pretty big. Um, that Rand Center got ruled out, and then Gobert and Mustafa Fall got ruled in. I played Mustafa Fall at no ownership. Uh, he, he had a good game at the flat min price. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're interested in, in those updates, starters before lock. Um, That'll all be posted on Patreon. So thanks again guys for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of your night and we'll see you all in the next video.